It's Thursday, and you know that means story time here at Washington Carnegie Public Library. So we're going to read a story today. We're going to read a poem. But first, we have to sing. That's what we always do. So can you guys help me? Can you help me sing along? Here we go. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story and you really want to show it, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, find a seat. If you're ready for a story, find a seat. If you're ready for a story and you really want to show it, if you're ready for a story, find a seat. Right, for our poem today, we're going to read a poem from a book by Shirley Hughes called Out and About, a first book of poems. And this poem book is sort of based around the seasons. And so this poem is from the section about summer. Okay, here we go. It's called Hill. Huge clouds slowly pass. Huge hill made of grass. Jungle under, thick and green. Tangled stalks creep between. Scramble up, hug the ground, suddenly see all around. Watch out fences, fields and town. From the top of the world, I come rolling down. That's the end of that poem from Out and About a first book of poems. Our story today is called Peter in Blueberry Land and it's by Elsa Besco. This is a very very old book. It was written a long time ago and it's very imaginary. It's going to take you into another world. Okay, so here we go. Peter in Blueberry Land. Early one morning, Peter went into the forest. He was carrying two baskets, one for red cranberries and one for blue blueberries. It was his mother's birthday and they were going to be a surprise present for her. But where were the berries? Peter could not find a single berry. Deeper and deeper he went into the forest until at last he sat down on a tree stump and burst into tears. Suddenly he felt a light tap on his shoe. Cheer up, Peter, said a voice. There was a tiny old man, no bigger than an apple. I'm the king of blueberry land and I'll show you where they grow. Peter was so surprised that he didn't know what to say. A second time, the old man tapped him lightly on the shoe with his tiny blue wand. And Peter was as small as he was. The heather seemed to grow in great bushes. The grass as tall as spears and the wildflowers were as big as crowns. Peter's baskets were now much too big for him to carry, and so the Blueberry King whistled up two squirrels. In a flash, they swung the baskets onto their backs and bounded away. Soon they were walking under ferns like huge palm trees, and Peter could hardly believe how different and interesting it all looked. There was an acorn, big as a helmet, and there was a spider. Peter was not sure if he was glad to see him, although the spider tried to look friendly. Look at how big the spider looks next to Peter, who's as small as the Blueberry King. 
Here we are, said the Blueberry King che cheerfully when they reached a little wood full of fruit trees. Look, said Peter excitedly, blue apples. Don't be silly, said the king laughing. They're blueberries, but come and meet my sons. Seven boys were playing ball with the berries and they came running up to meet Peter. Their clothes were splashed with the dark blue juice. Peter has come looking for blueberries, said the king. Let's see how quickly we can fill his basket. The boys scrambled up into the trees, laughing and tasting the ripe berries as they tossed them down. Peter tasted some of the berries too. As soon as his basket was filled to the brim, the boys gathered round him shouting, now it's time to play, come on Peter. They let Peter steer their bark boat as they slipped through the cool green water, past dragonflies and lily pads, their leaf sails swelling gently in the breeze. Peter forgot all about berry picking until one of his new friends said, We'll be late for Mrs. Cranberry. She's waiting for us with some fruit for you. Hurry up, Peter. Quickly, they beached their boat. They combed their hair, cleaned their teeth, and washed their hands, which were still blue with the sticky juice. Eight brown mice were waiting for them under the blueberry trees. Away they galloped through sunlight and shade over the springy thyme and sweet moss. Peter had hardly time to catch his breath when they reached a little clearing. In the middle was a cottage made of cranberry twigs. Outside in the sunshine sat Mrs. Cranberry and her five daughters polishing berries. See? One, two, three, four, five. And each one is a little bigger than the other. The shiniest and reddest fruit they put in a pot to cook with honey. Mmm. Peter, shouted the girls when they saw him. Mind you pick those berries carefully, warned Mrs. Cranberry, who could be sharp at times, but the girls were already gathering the fruit. Two curious ladybirds came to watch. Where are they? It doesn't show us. So the girls sang, Ladybird, Ladybird, fly away home to them. There they are, at the corners of the page. When Peter's basket was as full as it could be, they all had time to play. They took turns on the spider's web swing, and when a cricket started up a song, three of the girls joined in the chorus. See the cricket? Then Mrs. Cranberry rang the dinner bell, and all sorts of other guests, yellow butterflies, ants, and bees, hurried back with the children. Everyone ate the delicious juicy red cranberries and honey until they were full. Peter could only manage two. But now it was time to go and Peter said thank you to Mrs. Cranberry and goodbye to her daughters. His basket was now so full that everyone had to load it onto a wagon. Then they harnessed the mice and away they flew, although not as fast as before. They raced past two snails who went green with envy wishing they could travel so fast. The Blueberry King was waiting for them when they arrived home. Take Peter back to where we first met, he ordered the mice. Oh, don't go yet, cried the Blueberry Boys, and Peter begged their father to let him stay for just one more game. The King smiled and shook his head. It's getting late and your mother will be worried. Perhaps you will come and visit us another day. Goodbye, shouted everyone as Peter climbed into the wagon again. Come back soon. Suddenly, Peter stopped with a jerk. He was back on his tree stump, and there was no sign of the Blueberry King, or his sons, or even the whisker of one of his mice. I must have been dreaming, said Peter to himself. He looked down, and there at his feet were two baskets, both neatly filled, one with cranberries and one with blueberries. So it had all been true. When he got home, he drew a birthday card for his mother. His big sister helped him a little with the spelling. It says, Happy Birthday from Peter. Here it is. He picked these flowers for his mother too, and he put them round the baskets of berries. It was pretty. His mother was very pleased and said it was one of the nicest presents she'd ever had. Where did you find all those berries, she asked. 
But Peter smiled and shook his head. It was a secret between him and the king of Blueberry Land. And that is the end of Peter in Blueberry Land by Elsa Biscow. I love that book because it just reminds me of summer and going to pick my own blueberries. And I love how it's very imaginary. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so glad you could listen to our story. I love reading to you and I will be able to read to you next week if you want to join in with us again next week. If you ever want to read for yourself any of the stories that we read on Storytime, be sure to check at your local library to see if they have them. Wherever you are, just have a look and check your local library. Bye, we'll see you next week.